Hi guys, I hope you're having a wonderful day. I just wanted to elaborate a little bit more on the book of Enoch so we can kind of get to know the book of Enoch a little bit better. That is uh, the book that was actually taken out of the Bible. And it says that the book of Enoch contains unique material on the origins of demons and Nephilims. And um, the whole thing is, is that you know, I think the reason why they took that Bible out is because um, it would explain a lot of the things that are going on in this world right now. Um, a lot of the unseen things and people really don't want to talk about the unseen things, that, but it is part of our lives and we should know. Um, so it says um, why some angels fell from heaven, which is talked about in the Bible, but it's not like elaborated on a lot as in the book of Enoch. And so um, I feel like with the book of Enoch, it just kind of pushes everything in line. So we kind of have some type of foundation as far as those questions that we had uh, that were in the other books. So this is a um, a more in-depth Uh, explanation of those things so it says why some angels fell from heaven an explanation of why the genesis flood was morally necessary and the prophetic um, exposition of the thousand year reign of the messiah three books are traditionally attributed to enoch including the distinct works two enoch and three enoch none of the three books are considered to be um conical scripture by the majority of Jewish or Christian bodies, which, you know, I really don't understand why, because I feel like um, if it was a part of what happened, why should it not be included? Because we do learn about the fallen angels and the Bible and things like that. So why would the book of Enoch not be included? Because again, it explains in depth exactly what happened and why so it says that modern scholars believe that enoch was originally written in either aramaic or hebrew the languages first used for the jewish for jewish texts ephraim isaac suggests that the book of enoch like the book of daniel was composed partially in aramaic and partially in hebrew so we know that aramaic was the Uh, the tongue of Jesus. And um, I feel like it's a little bit difficult to get that translation to English because it's different. I mean, it's totally different. So it's not going to be the same. But uh, with that being said, I still feel like it should not be, you know, taken out um, at the same time, because we could at least get the gist of what happened so why would you just take the whole book out that makes no sense to me so with that being said as I was reading and listening um about the book of Enoch it just kind of like is very scary don't get me wrong but the things that happen with the fallen angels it just kind of explains a lot of things that are happening now and so when we look back on our history it just kind of puts things into place for me. So I don't know about you guys, but um, yeah, I just kind of wanted to discuss a little bit about how the fallen angels came and why they came. And, um, you know, it just kind of, like I said, puts things into a little bit more perspective for me, because it seems like when you read the Bible, it seems a little bit choppy to me. And it's not explained well and I know that has a lot to do with it being translated so many different times but um I just think that you talk to God you know pray to God and ask him for wisdom and understanding of his word and things will come to you a little bit better um like yesterday when I was talking to God I was like God why you know has everything you know just went so harsh why is everything so harsh and I think I explained this yesterday. God spoke to me in this gentle voice and he said, 
you know, I am powerful. I am the great I am. And I have to be strong because the enemy is strong. I have to overthrow him. You know, I will and I have overcome him, you know, and um, it just kind of put things into perspective for me because it seems like a lot of times when you read the Bible, it just seems so scary, like, oh, my God, you know, and it makes you kind of like, you know, kind of takes you back a little bit. Like, you know, why, why do I have to read these scary things? You know, but the enemy is strong. You know, the enemy is strong. And so um, God wants us also to put on our whole armor. So if he didn't include a lot of those things in his word, you know, how could we prepare uh, and put on our whole armor? Because we wouldn't even know, you know, maybe we, you know, we're just thinking, you know, we have to be strong within our, you know, mind or, you know, maybe just in our body. But no, we have to be strong in the word. We have to be strong in our body. We have to be strong in our mind. We have to be totally prepared for the enemy because he will come in so many different ways to kill, steal and destroy. So we have to have on our whole armor of Christ and God loves us. And I'm going to say this and I continue to say this even in death. God loves us.